for the last time. Where's Jacques? Oh, there you okay. Go. <laughs> I had to get my last. I had to get the last one in. Last one in. Welcome, everyone, and we'll uh, call to order the Capitola City Council meeting for Thursday, December thirteenth. May I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Bertrand. Here. Councilmember Peterson. Here. Councilmember Bator. Here. And Mayor Termini. Here. Would you all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Staff, are there any additional materials? None. Thank you. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Staff has no changes. Um, Excellent. One an announcement. The announcement. Ron's announcement. We'll move on to announcements. Yes. We'll, okay. we'll pick it up. Um, this is the time for public comments. Anyone who has a comment on an item that is not on this evening's agenda, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll move along. We have. Uh, our treasurer, any comments for the good of the order, Mr. Treasurer? Thank you, Mayor Termini. There's actually two things. First, I'd like to address the $65,000 that you might have read in the Santa Cruz Sentinel the other day, yesterday, actually. And um, I actually had, I don't know where they got their numbers, but they're correct. So I had gone into um, finance director's office last week asking who the heck is uh, this uh, shoot M Haley LLP and why are they charging us $65,000 and he said oh that's that's measure L legal fees and I recall when we talked about this in the City Council back in September October I, I remember when we went ahead and 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 talked about yeah going out and getting a legal opinion I apologize. I didn't ask how much that was going to cost. I mean, I usually try to when we ask for a, a special counsel or opinion from Public Works or whatever. I usually ask, well, let's let's you know how much is that going to put you back in schedule or cost? But I had no idea that uh, we were we were signing up for 65k. So um, I think there's a lesson here. Maybe it's just uh, for the future uh, City Council that when we do ask for you know, special counsel or send things back to committee or ask for another uh, 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 consultant to come and weigh in on something, that we should always consider the impact on staff and time and money. So, um, Mr. Treasurer, just to clarify, um, we didn't pay a consultant for that. Um, we actually brought it to a judge. We did not prevail. We paid the other party's legal fees. Okay, I, 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 all right, fine. I just Which doesn't resolve, you know, resolve us of any um, uh, lack of attention and perhaps more attention should have been paid by the council on that. So it might have been avoided, but your point is well taken. It's just something that I had, uh, and maybe I was in, in, improperly viewing things from this desk. It's this, it, sometimes we're kind of, it seems to me we're cavalier and sending things back to staff for more opinions, more detail, more, you know, and, and that all, whenever we do that, it's, it, it's an impact. Sometimes we should, maybe we should make decisions with less information. Anyway, that's a treasure mouthing off. Sorry about that. That's okay. That's your job. Not anymore because, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think that's all we have time for, for your comments. We're going to move on to uh, council. <laughs> Because as you well know, we, uh, we passed Measure K, and as of the, the passage of that uh, measure, we no longer uh, require an elected treasurer. We, uh, we instead are allowed to appoint a treasurer. And since I am an elected treasurer, I thought it would be an appropriate time to give you guys, the new city council, an opportunity to appoint a treasurer instead. And hopefully, uh, that would be finance director, but that's just my personal opinion. So I uh, would like to announce that my, uh, my intention to resign as the elected treasurer effective in the next couple of weeks, depending on when staff says it's uh, uh, 
uh, most appropriate from an administrative standpoint and give you the opportunity to appoint a treasurer. So thank you um, for allowing me uh, to speak at these uh, the opportunities and it's been a great uh, pleasure to work with you guys and um, I'll, I'll be seeing you around. Thank you. Do we have to accept the resignation? I believe you do. Uh, okay. <laughs> I thought I had you on a technicality, but <laughs> thank you. You are you're a terrific treasurer and you have been for the last two years. Council comments? I have none. Nothing. Nothing? I'll leave it up to me. I have the, we've been waiting for this. This is the second place winner from the plein air event. Um, it had to be sent back to the artist to be varnished because it is done in, in oils, I think. Um, but this is second place. It will be hanging in council chambers to add to our collection of plein air winners. We had the Capitola employees holiday party last night and uh, it is just great. We have such a cohesive group and a terrific uh, bunch of staff and uh, all the employees, all the departments, a good time was had by all. Staff, any comments? None tonight. None? We move on to the consent calendar. These are items taken as a single vote, unless someone on the council or the audience would like to pull an item. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move the consent. I ask the public if anyone would like to pull anything. Hearing no one, I saw no movement out there. Move the consent calendar. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. We'll now go on to gen general government public hearings. And the first item is consider a resolution confirming and approving the canvas and returns and results of the general municipal election. Madam City Clerk. Yes, um, as required by state law, the County Registrar of Voters, since we have a consolidated election, has um, 30 days to certify the election. She has done so and provided us with the official results. Um, those are in your packet. Um, the election included three members of the City Council for four-year terms, three city measures, and one public um, measure done by initiative. All four items passed, so um, in addition to accepting the returns for um, the incoming city council member. We are also um, accepting the will of the voters as required by law and enacting the four ordinances related to the items that were voted upon by measure. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Any comments from the public? Please step forward. <coughs> Welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Tom Fredericks. I'm from Felton. And I'm here um, to urge council to consider the ramifications of entering the language of Measure L into ordinance. I um, got here by using our current regional transportation network, which is uh, the, high, the 35 bus to the 66 bus to the 55 bus. Everything synced up beautifully tonight, so I'm here on time. Um, but I'm here from the perspective of it being a regional transportation plan. And, you know, I, I really, I don't know if I'll live long enough at, given my age of 71, but uh, for me it would, who use the bus system, the idea of a reliable other mode of transportation in the rail corridor, corridor would um, be a, a, a wonderful quality of life addition to my daily life. And this measure through its misrepresentations was allowed to pass at a very narrow margin and jeopardizes the regional transportation planning. So I wanted to offer that perspective tonight as you proceed with your discussions. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the council? Welcome. Thank you and congratulations to new council members. My name is Barry Scott. I live in Aptos, and I, I rise uh, in, in with the same concerns as the previous speaker. Um, I'm a county resident, and I see the rail corridor as a county piece of infrastructure. 
And uh, my concern is that if you uh, ad 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 adopt the, 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 the results of the, of the election while the Measure L is being investigated, that this may be a mistake. Uh, there's obviously problems with the transparency and the con conduct of the Measure L campaign. Um, if you adopt that measure and that language, you're changing the city charter and the and health and safety ordinances. And I think that would be premature. Um, I would ask that a motion be made to accept the results with the condition that the uh, Measure L language is has uh, flaws and questions and, and, and table that part of it to Thank a later you. date. And uh, I will, uh, would anyone else like to see this? I'll bring it back now. And uh, city attorney, I think that we have no other option but to certify the election, is that true? The elections code uh, says that um, once the uh, election results have been certified that you're under a um, mandate. So it's a ministerial act on the city council. You don't have any discretion with regard to uh, enacting it into law as it was passed by the voters. Thank you. Understood. Any comments by council? Is there a motion? Motion to adopt staff uh, recommendation and approve the election results by resolution. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now on to the fun part. Um, this is the time where we thank retiring council members and I'm afraid Stephanie Harlan could not be with us tonight but hopefully she's watching, maybe online, and I will show you the lovely gifts, the par lovely parting gifts we've gotten her. This is from Frank Perry, and they are seed packets from the Brown Bulb and Seed Ranch, Capitola, California, 1918, from the Capitola Historic Museum. This is a gem, this is going to Stephanie, and I believe, is the museum putting these posters up for sale? It will next year when it reopens. There we go, very nice, and set this back here and we'll get that to Stephanie. I get to open up Stephanie's lovely gift. This is Chris, like, <laughs> this is early Christmas. <laughs> early Christmas. This is great. Okay. It'll drop. Oh, very nice. Oh my. <laughs> okay, this says, Stephanie Harlan, thank you for your dedicated service to Capitola and this city seal and uh, it's a lovely piece of glassware and we'll hold that over for Stephanie as well. And I will uh, open up the floor. Anyone who wanted to, anyone from the public who wanted to say something about our council member Harlan and her um, retiring out of council after many, many, many years of service. If not, I'll bring it up to here. What do you have to say about our friend Stephanie? You know, it's, it's ever since I've been on the council, which has been six years, both Stephanie and Mike have been here with me for every meeting and it's been a treat. Uh, I remember the first meeting I attended, uh, we got our first packet for the meeting and it was 800 pages and I thought it was a joke. And uh, unfortunately what was on there was we were trying to pass an ordinance to decide whether we would charge 10 cents or 25 cents a bag uh, to discourage people from, from you know, to, to start encouraging the use of reusable bags. And I remember that uh, that was a very highly contested item here in the council. It passed three to two, and it was myself, Dennis Norton, and Stephanie Harlan that passed that measure. And I always give her credit because she was very adamant about how important this was. Stephanie was a, a big protector of the, one of her big passions was the Monterey Bay Scenic Trail. Uh, she's been here for, I, I don't know the exact number, I'm going to say it's 32 years at, on the city council. Give or take. Yeah. Many <laughs> terms, okay. Uh, I heard that she was the first woman mayor in Capitola. It's a remarkable career. Uh, she always added something lively to the conversation and uh, it was, it's been a wonderful six years for me. I'm going to miss both of them and at this time especially her and I wish her the best in her retirement. Words for Stephanie? Yes. Um, it was maybe 2014 or 2015 when Stephanie invited me to lunch and asked me if I had ever considered running for city council and that was one of the first times that I actually considered doing it. And since that time, I was so very lucky to have Stephanie's guidance and mentorship and all of the um, many years of institutional knowledge that she had to just share with me and I was very lucky in that regard and she was always, well, um, always very willing to share that with myself and with anyone else. Um, she has given so many years of service to our city and it's it's just phenomenal to see someone that spent so many years of their life um, in service to others and I'm um, I'm so grateful to have had these two years with her on the council 
Um, and if she thinks that I'm not going to keep calling her for advice, then she's <laughs> wrong. But uh, <laughs> um, so if she's watching, I would just say, Stephanie, thank you so very much. It was um, an honor to serve with you. Jock. One thing I like about Stephanie, and I think a lot of people in this town have benefited from that, and that's her innate ability to know what's going on in the neighborhoods. She goes out and talks to people and knocks on doors. If there's an issue coming up, she'll find out what the neighbors feel about, let's say it's a city planning issue. She'll go around and talk to the neighbors and see how this particular plan of someone is going to affect them and is this something reasonable, certainly within the zoning code. So I link up with her on that. I think any one of us, and I think we all agree, our job is to know how any particular issue that comes before us is going to affect the people in Capitola. And that's one thing she taught me, and it's very important for her, and I think we're going to continue that tradition. Thank you. For me, the, the greatest lesson that Stephanie taught me, and I sat at her side up here for 14 years, um, and I remember one particular vote where three council members, because of the lineup, were voting first, and they all voted aye. Stephanie and I were really on the fence about this project, and I went along with what I knew was going to be a passed vote to try and get a, a unanimous decision. And she voted no. And I said, uh, why'd you vote no? She goes, well, you were against it too. I said, yeah, but we already had three votes. And she goes, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you had a lone vote. Always vote the way you feel about a project. And that was an eye opener for me. Being the kind of person who always wants everyone to come together, um, standing apart is as important as coming together. So I appreciate Stephanie. Now, I think I have a lovely parting gift. <laughs> who, is that, who is the lucky devil who's going to give oh, that to oh, me? Oh, that's me. But I'm going to bring you up here. And oh, OK. <laughs> it's what you do to everybody else that you talk to. That's, so this, this is true. <laughs> You're getting to hold the microphone. I've learned everything from the yeah. Learned everything from the Mike Termini show. A uh, little history about Mike. Um, I just got to look at these numbers because I don't want to get them wrong. Ran on the city council from 2004 to 2008. Had a little hiccup in 2008. <laughs> I came back in 2010 to 2018, three terms as mayor. Worked on numerous committees in his own volunteer time. And when you're on this job as city council, there is the, the Metro Commission, there's the AMBAG, there's all these other commissions. But this is what he does in his spare time, aside from having a full job. Served on the board for the Capitol Public Safety Foundation, the board for the American Red Cross, Capitol Art and Culture Commission. And there wasn't an art and wine festival that Mike Germany wasn't making sure that, it ha that all things came together, Capitol Begonia Festival. Um, and when he's not busy doing that, Sometimes he was in character. There's only a, one person I know that can be Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and lead the Halloween parade, Halloween parade every year. That's our, our man, Mike. Um, nicknames, the mayor, snake charmer, magician, and most recently, the motion maker, because this is what he does. Favorite sayings, not a problem, and whose idea was that? <laughs> On a serious note, this is a sad day for, for me because I'm losing a good friend that I'm working with here, but someone that actually mentored me. Uh, I came to town in 2009 to retire and surf and play golf. I wandered onto the parking commission and he saw me at a meeting and said, you need to be on the general plan committee. And the rest was history, okay? I'm under, the, uh, under his, uh, his hex for, and got into this job. I've learned from this man and uh, that he's a friend to almost everyone in this room to public works, to the police, to all employees. I can say without a doubt that no one has done more for this city or loves this city more than this man standing in front of me. I, the, two new build, the only two new buildings I can think of in this town that are, that are there and are gonna be built is, he was participatory in, building, in helping the bandstand being built and now we're getting ready to do a library. So without him, I'm afraid there may be no more new buildings. <laughs> The one thing is, he, you know, it, Mike is never one to be on top or to brag about what he did, but you know, the one thing I'm taking away, and this is my parting thought with him, that I learned from him was, he taught me that no one person is larger than the position, but a position, but a person can make the position large. And that's Mike Termini, and thank you for everything you've done for the city of Capitola. I, I want you to know,
Okay, so, so uh, Mike, uh, Mike has always had a sense of humor when it comes to running a campaign. And uh, we had to search far and wide, and we had to go to the internet in order to find one of his relics, which was a highly, well, he had to actually go to the city manager's budget and bid on this item, uh, and it wasn't cheap. And it is a button that says here, don't be a weenie, vote for Termini, okay? And uh, after we secured the button, we decided, we decided that since Mike was a cook, actually not a cook, he's a chef. Hang on to this. I got this. We thought that the most appropriate thing for him <laughs> was, was his own apron to recognize his political career. And with that, oh, it's all yours. Oh, perfect. There's, there's, part, there's part two. There's more. <laughs> what does that say? Mayor retired. Mayor retired. <laughs> 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 Pass the bag down. Pass yes. the bag. <laughs> and now is the time for uh, you said your piece. We'll let you. I'm done. Quiet now. <laughs> and uh, Kristen, anything? Yes. Uh, Mike, I want to thank you because I've learned so much from you, not only in the things that you have shared with me, but the things that I have seen you do. And, and just from watching you do this job and be in the community, I've learned so very much. And I am so lucky and honored to have had these two years. Um, you have given me an example of what to strive for as I continue in my career in, in uh, government and politics and just in being in my community. There's not a board or commission or event or pretty much anywhere that I've gone in this city where someone doesn't say, oh yeah, you're on, you're on the uh, city council with Mike, right? <laughs> and it's, and it's, and it's, um, you're just so loved in this in this community and very um, rightfully so. And um, again, just thank you. Thank you so much. And much like I said with Stephanie, um, you're not going that far because I'll be calling you still as well. Um, so thank you again. Thank you. Mr. Jacques. Yeah. So um, I, I remember when um, I became vice mayor, Mike took me aside, he says, we're meeting every morning before the mayor, before the city council. <laughs> so every month, or every two times a month, uh, James, uh, well, uh, Gail's, right? We're there talking about the agenda. So I can't talk with anyone else about it because of the Brown Act. So I'm, I'm cornered. <laughs> that was but, one of the reasons I made him. Talk yeah, to me. <laughs> I think that's why he did it. <laughs> it was very good, very good. Um, yeah, I've learned a lot about how to fill the role, how you are as a mayor, but more than that, somehow you have the spirit of Capitola. And you've, you've filled it up. I think Ed said it right. You've expanded that role. And the other day I was thinking when you weren't going to be here in mayor anymore, I said, who's going to do the, the, you know, the thing at the bandstand every, you know, I mean, what's going to happen? With the, I, I was going through all these events that you do all the time and everyone assumes you're just going to be there and you are. And I said, God, what's Capitola going to do? <laughs> don't have an answer. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine too, but still, um, you're going to be well missed. Thank you. And I'll miss you too. Staff, any last jabs? You're good? <laughs> <laughs> last jabs. <laughs> okay. This is such an emotional moment that I can barely really make any comments, but I'm just kidding, <laughs> as you all know. I'm never too emotional to talk, and certainly not without a microphone. I'd like to thank the staff, uh, Steve, Public Works. Uh, being in construction most of my life, I recognize uh, people out there doing work, and they are always out there doing work, and I appreciate their leader, Steve Jesberg, first class. Um, Chief McManus, who's back there, head of arguably the best, most conscientious, most um, professional police force I've ever encountered. Um, thank you very much. First class to you and all of your people. <clears throat> to Larry, where's, there he is. <laughs> Little known fact, Larry and I see each other about three times a day. <clears throat> <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
we seem to always be bumping into this at the same meetings, and it's been great. You've been a real right hand, and you're terrific. Um, Katie, is she back there? Hi, Katie. There you go, all the way in the back. Uh, community Development Director just has taken that job to new levels. Thank you. And thank you for not taking that job that was offered to you, <laughs> and we were able to snake you back. <laughs> um, Linda keeps me out of jail. <laughs> Little known fact, if it weren't for a good um, city clerk, we would never file on time, we'd never file the right papers, and we'd be getting nasty letters from the FPPC all the time, so thank you. And does it in a very gentle way, and then does it again when I'm late, <laughs> and then does it again. Jim Malberg back there, finance director, thanks for keeping the finance advisory committee in line. It's a not an easy herd of cats to herd, um, so well done. And Jamie, I don't know what to say. You've, you know, you've become a friend, but I, I resent only one thing you've ever said to me, <laughs> and the last time we spoke, you said, you know, you're starting to sound like a city manager. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, that had me, I had to look inward on that one, and, and you're right, and, and, and you have shown me how to do it. You are terrific, you're forward thinking, uh, you're energetic, Energetic to a fault, I might add. <coughs> Going skiing and hurting yourself on a regular basis, but uh, keep up the good work. I'd like to thank former council members, people like Gail, Dennis, Bruce Arthur, Tony Galtieri, Kirby Nichols, Sam Story. Um, we are shaped by council members we work with and council members that came before us. They set the tone. It is, they, the council members that have come before us are the reason that we sit in these chambers twice a month, and it is orderly, it is respectful, there is intelligent dialogue and discourse. They have set that tone, and I am so proud of that, almost more than anything in Capitola. We have superlative council meetings, even when the worst possible thing is happening. We go through it, we're, and we respect everyone's opinion. It's a great feeling. <clears throat> to my wonderful Linda Smith back there, eight years on the Planning Commission for me. Just terrific, um, even though I tried to get you to run for council, Larry always won, her husband, <laughs> and he said, it's either the council or me, so mm. I'm afraid I lost on that one. Current council members, mm -hmm. Stephanie is not here, much gratitude and guidance, um, and steadfast interviews, and she's done a lot for the community. Kristen, you know, when I first met you, I immediately knew that you were gonna be a powerful voice in the council. And you've proven that to be so. First couple of meetings, hanging back. Then you were right out there with the rest of us. Perfect. <clears throat> Jacques, there has never been anyone more hardworking and endless amount of time devoted to the city. There has never been a meeting you didn't love. You are right there all the time. You have taken us down many rabbit holes and you've always brought us back, so thank you for that. Ed, fellow conspirator, yeah. a partner in crime, a peer, often an adversary, <laughs> uh, and you're my friend. So that doesn't have to stop tonight. Peter, as I've said, I've really grown to like you as a person. I only like you a little bit less now that you've resigned, but that's okay. <laughs> I can forgive you, you're a great guy, and I think that there's places for someone like you up here on Planning Commission. On You have such an intelligent voice, such an easy pace. So don't go far. Stay around. Uh, committees I've served on, my goodness. I, I dashed some off just quickly, and I ran out of space. Public Safety with Lynn Banks, the current president. <clears throat> Art and Cultural, thank you, Kelly Barreto, for being the staff, and Larry. Commission on the Environment, Village Master Plan Committee, Library Ad Hoc Committee, Library Design Committee, uh, small aside, Library Design Committee will go on through construction. If the new council sees fit, I'd love to stay on that one committee, thank you. Um, Monterey Bay Community Power, an often overlooked uh, community board. They provide the lights, the electricity that we're sitting under. They have enabled us um, years and years ahead of the deadline they have made our county carbon free, 100%. Just an amazing event. <clears throat> and in the next four years, it, all the electricity will be renewable. It will all be solar, it'll all be wind powered, and it will be zero fossil fuel or hydro 
in our three counties. That's an incredible achievement. The Monterey Bay Air Quality Control Board, Air Resources Board, that was pretty dry meetings, but they were fun. The County Criminal Justice Committee, which uh, one of those odd committees that I sat on where that was the only one in the room without a gun. It was very interesting. Uh, I called it the Legion of, uh, of uh, you know, superlative heroes or something. It was just, it was judges and cops and judges and cops. City Select Committee, RTC, Blue Ribbon Committee on Homelessness, County Library JPA, County Library Finance Authority, RDA Successor Oversight Board, uh, hiring panels for various uh, police chiefs and, and such. Uh, Pack Cove Residence Liaison. That stuck, sticks in my mind for a long, long time. I'll tell you a little secret about being in political office. When you lay your head on the pillow at night, you do not remember any of the great decisions you've made. You remember all the lousy ones. <laughs> you remember every decision you could have done better. You remember every decision that, where the motion could have been crafted better. They all come back to you. When you walk down the street and you see buildings that were approved, you're not proud of the ones you approved and look great. You look at the ones that should have never been approved and you go, oh, what was I thinking? So that's the, that's the burden of being an elected official. It's, uh, it's interesting. But the joy of small town government is so palpable and so delicious. You walk down the street, you know everyone. And if you don't know them, everyone still says good morning and hello. This, this is as Mayberry as it gets, <laughs> okay? When I'm mayor, I often call myself the mayor of Whoville. This is a great place. There are criticisms, and they're generally gentle. I generally hear, you know, I watched the meeting last night, and you, you folks did a good job, but you know, you could have done this. And, and it's, it's wonderful, and it's, it's enriching. Then there's the not-so-gentle ones. Some are from out of town, but some of them are locals. And speaking of out of town, you know, there's no wall around Capitola, so be careful when you start to think that way, and I speak to all the residents now, um, any problem that any city has around us is our problem too. We are in this together. We have to always remember we're part of a larger community. So Santa Cruz's problems are our problems. The county's problems are our problems. Watsonville, even Salinas, it, it doesn't matter. We are all together, and everyone deserves the right to have an opinion, and everyone has value, whether they're dressed in a fine suit or whether they're carrying recycled cans to the recycling center. It doesn't matter. The human um, quality, the, the sentient being that walks around us, it doesn't matter who they are or what they are. And sometimes we can put too much value on uh, achievement and, a, and appearance. Um, if a news article comes out and it seems to imp impose impending doom upon the community, and that's a device that journalists use often, my message to you is, and this council, the sky is not falling. More poor decisions are made by knee-jerk, panicked reactions. And like Ed said, it's never a problem. You can get through this. To the public, I would ask you to be kind to our council members, please, the ones that are coming up here, certainly the ones that are leaving, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, there is no great glory in this job, there's no windfall of cash, there is no political favor, um, you derive nothing from this job except long hours and a feeling of accomplishment. So be gentle with the electeds. There is not a community in our county where this is a full-time job. We all work at other jobs, we all have families, we all have a personal life, mine being a bit thin the last 18 years, but that's okay. Uh, I, it, this, is, this has been my personal life and I've loved every minute of it. To the new council, be humble. Do not think for a moment that all that falls from your mouth is gold. Trust me, there are plenty of people around who will tell you otherwise. Accept the criticism, take it to heart, but just because there are people all around you 
telling you that everything you say is right, it doesn't mean it's right. And you, and you have to qu start to understand what someone in Washington, D.C., in the Senate, and, and what they go through, because they have a staff telling them that all the time. So heads can get large. This is not the place for it. It doesn't work. Be loving. Everyone here are our neighbors. It's their environment that we're fooling around with at every meeting. So when they get upset, it's not personal. It may seem so, but it's not. But they hold it very dearly, even to the point where when we get rid of a crosswalk, there's actually someone who, that was their favorite crosswalk. Who knew? <laughs> These are the kind of things you deal with. Why are they painting City Hall that color? I've never really liked that color. You listen. Be decisive. Nothing is ever done if you have endless public input and meetings on it. Have the appropriate amount but then stand by your decision. And most importantly, never make a decision because it will make you popular. Rather, make a decision because it's the right one for the city. You didn't get this job to be popular. I think we all know that being up here. And I think the folks that are gonna be stepping up here soon know that really well. I have a love affair with this city and it is not over. I believe that once you love someone or something, you love it forever. You may not be near it, you may not be in it, uh, but you love something forever because lo true love is deep and it's forever. And I th hope that I leave all the best to this in future councils. You are Capitola. You represent it, but we all are Capitola. And I, I, you know, I say something at the end of every meeting and I, I think I should clarify it and what I mean by being nice to each other, there's never a good reason to hold back kindness, ever. There's no reason to hate or launch a personal attack. There's no reason to hold a grudge. We're all going to the same place. We've all got the same end. No one's gonna win this race. So you may as well be kind to each other. So for the last time, I will say good night Capitola. Be nice to each other. See you out on the streets, Mike. Um, so we're gonna move on to item 7C, uh, Oath of Office Ceremony, and uh, Linda, do you have a report? And you're we gonna have administer the Oath of Offices. And in, in most cases, yes. We have three members to welcome and welcome back. Um, we'll be doing it in order of vote getting, and we have a special guest who will be swearing in our first member, um, Yvette Brooks, and um, the, I guess you are now mayor, mayor of Santa Cruz and dear friend, um, is going to do the honors of swearing her in. On the, on the gold spot. <laughs> Camera's over there to the right.
and you will all be able to recite this by memory by the end of the week. Yeah. 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 Okay, so now we move on to City Council reorganization and um, the selection of the mayor and vice mayor. So I call upon the group here to um, nominate a, a member here for mayor. I move nomination of Vice Mayor Bertrand as mayor. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So I call for nominations for vice mayor. I'll nominate Councilwoman uh, Kristen Peterson as vice mayor. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. <laughs> There's a nomination and a second for two seconds. Two seconds. Okay. <laughs> I'll uh, Councilmember Peterson for uh, vice mayor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we now have a mayor and vice mayor. I move on to item 7C. Um, we do have some. Um, Council appointments, and I think we have a presentation from our city manager. He, he's running tech. <laughs> oh, he's running tech, so. Oh. Um, okay, yeah. you're going to do it, sorry. Yes. So, um, although the bulk of our um, appointments will be handled in January, there are a few organizations on which we have representatives um, that we wish to give um, people enough time to prepare um, and attend those meetings. So there are three items this evening. Um, the first of which is the Planning Commission. Um, these are five individual appointments by each of the council members. We received two sitting um, current members who have expressed interest in being re, um, reappointed and interest from five community members and you've had the chance to review those and speak with people. So I will um, 
begin with my returning um, members. Uh, Council Member Botworth, oh, who we, would you like to appoint? Reappoint uh, T.J. Welch. Good. And um, reappoint Ed. Ma Mayor Bertrand. Yes. Reappoint um, Ed Newman. Yep. And uh, Council Member Peterson, who is your appointment? Uh, my appointment is Peter Wilk. Peter Wilk. Very good. Okay. And uh, Council Member Brook. I appoint Courtney Christensen. Courtney Christensen. Mm -hmm. And Council Member Story. I appoint Mick Ruth. Very good. The next item um, is the sanitation board. Um, this requires a council represent re representative meets twice a month, um, end of the day on Thursdays. Uh, there's only one meeting in January, but there are often two. Um, this position was long held and very well represented by Council Member Harlan. Um, and uh, our now mayor has been the alternate in this position. So we need both a representative and an alternate so you have any uh, either nominations or offers we can do this by concurrence okay yeah i am the alternate i'd like to continue as a representative as the alternate or the person as the representative oh good okay okay so um our alternate has offered to move into the representative's position is there anyone who is interested in taking on the alternate position if there's no one else that <laughs> is interested um, um i would be willing to serve as the alternate very good. And council concurrence on these appointments? Confirm. Very yeah. good. And the final item we have uh, tonight is um, the Association of Monterey Bay Area Governments, or AMBAG. Uh, we do have um, monthly meetings. They move around within that region. Um, our current representative and alternate are still with us. We have um, Council Member Peterson has been serving in that position as representative and Council Member Botorf has been the alternate. Um, so at this time um, they may express interest in continuing or offer other members of the council the opportunity to take those positions. I'm happy to continue in that role unless there's someone who's um, really interested in taking it over. Otherwise I'm happy to continue. Okay. And I have the same feeling I'm happy to be the alternate unless someone has that desire. And is the council happy with that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm happy. Yes, yes. Very good. And we will have a much longer process <laughs> in January. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, just a comment while we before we move on is that I'd like to put something on the agenda for next meeting to prepare us. I'd like to have staff prepare uh, some direction that we can discuss about dissolving the Parking and Traffic Commission and bring that back with some, some input before we decide pick those personnel. Okay. We'll put that on the agenda. Thank you. So with that, we move on to uh, 7C, and this is to consider the 2019 meeting schedule, and also um, uh, for the successor agency, and also to consider uh, when we start our meeting here in the city council. So is there a staff report on this? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is an annual item that we do each year to set the meeting calendar for the city council. Um, last year, we discussed potentially moving the meeting start time from seven o'clock to six o'clock. The primary reason why we were discussing it was to try to get to the general business of the city council early in the evening to try to facilitate better community participation. Uh, however, at that time, we also acknowledged the fact that council members who work regular office schedules may have a difficult time attending the closed session, which, which would often begin at five o'clock. So last year, the council directed us to continue with the seven o'clock meeting time, uh, but then maybe revisit the topic a year later so here we are a year later and we're looking to set the agenda the calendar for this next calendar year uh looking for your feedback and i'm available to answer any questions yes any questions of jamie i had questions uh mr mayor if i may i had questions concerning the calendar jamie um i noticed that between the submittal date and the meeting date it's generally about 10 days uh, but for the meeting of March the 14th, there's a submittal date of February the 25th, which, um, which is an extended period. Um, and for the meeting of March 28th, the submittal date is March 11th, which is, was an extended period, kind of out of the norm. I've noticed all that um, the difference was about 10 days, well, nine to 10 days, but for those two, and I was just wondering if there was a reason for that or if that's just a misstated date i think it's a misstated date we in general what we're doing here is we're setting the the, the calendar for the council meetings and the submittal date is more an internal date i think for us to prepare our agenda packets yes um okay. we can confirm it generally it is the monday before the packet goes out occasionally we have what we call a fifth week um 
and so there, there is some shift and it, it may uh, be we, but we will confirm that it is in fact the Monday that before the packet goes out unless there's a holiday so some of those also right. shift for holidays right. but, yeah. but well yes I, if there I is extra time it may be that it became a fifth week right well I'm just encouraging to look at those two dates and we will we will confirm those before published and if I may I did have also a question about the meeting of Tuesday November the 26th the submittal date is the 18th uh, but it seemed like that would be a very short turnaround for staff to be able to uh, release the agendas um, by you know by that Tuesday so just Making we'll sure we'll take we'll take a look at the, it. I believe it's still the Monday um, before, or either that, or we've got a. Yes, the yes. it's it's it is that Monday. We, but that's the our our standard because we have a, a an, a meeting the day prior or the week prior. So okay, so it, but it is a quicker turnaround. You are correct. But the agenda will be will be posted still that same Friday. Yes. Or would it come out sooner because it's so, yeah to, to be clear so what we're doing is we're setting the calendar for the council meetings and the the, the submittal date is usually the, the last date for information to get in for a packet it's usually more of an internal date that we work from our published date for the agenda information the agenda packet is the Friday prior to the meeting and you're correct that one meeting before the Thanksgiving break we don't move forward this uh, agenda packet production so it is produced on Friday it's still Friday. okay yeah Thank you. Yes, and we are still within the, the 72 hours as required by the Brown Act. We usually publish um, in excess of the 72 hour Thank requirement. You. I have a question if we move the um, general, uh, any other questions? Okay, my other question, if, if we move the city um, meeting earlier, what's that gonna mean for our closed sessions? And I mean, it's still an hour before, 45 minutes before, that could be a problem for people to work. Yeah, as I mentioned in the staff report, I think for folks that work, I think it could be a challenge because in general we need between 30 and 60 minutes for a closed session. So if we move to 6, that means a 5 o'clock start at some meetings. If we move to 6.30, that would mean a 5.30 start for some meetings. So I, I would really encourage the council to have a conversation about what people's work schedule looks like to see if it's possible and if the value of moving earlier, if it's worth it or not. Um, if I may, I, I would prefer it to stay Till, or to begin at seven to continue as, as you want to the public weigh in on this before we discuss the yeah. item or uh, yeah I just want her opinion on the time you're absolutely right so um, any open um, conversation from the public right now anyone like to weigh in on this seeing none back to the uh, councilor for discussion yeah I, I'm, I think that we should leave it at the time that it's at I think it's going to create a hardship for people that are working especially with the fact that our closed sessions have been at least an hour if sometimes not earlier than that I think what we need to do is maybe sit down as a group and uh, discuss some ways that we can streamline the, uh, yeah. the meeting agenda maybe we can limit the amount of time we allow for things like presentations and uh, you know general comments and so possibly we should have some kind of a target where we get to the general business by 730 and I think at that point we can you know we can be pr very productive with our meeting time so I'm not in favor of, of changing the time at this point so I, I I kind of like that. Any other comments? No. Well, I just I, I agree with that. I think that we should try to keep things consistent um, until maybe we as a team get our rhythm, and then if we want, we can always look at uh, altering the dates at that time if we feel that it's not working out for everyone. Okay. The other so item that we are requesting is a council direction for a preference for um, August. Um, if we do wish to have just a single meeting, we have the, the choice between the earlier or the later date. Hmm. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry I wasn't clear in my presentation. Staff would recommend taking the first meeting in, August, in, in July off. It's diff often difficult to get a quorum uh, around the 4th of July, mm -hmm. and then the first meeting in August off. So we would be dark for two meetings during the summer. But my recommendation is not to do it for two consecutive meetings, as that is a relatively extended period without the city council getting together. So that's okay. that would be my suggestion. So instead of um, moving the uh, city council meeting, do people generally accept the calendar dates? We have consent. Is there a motion? We need a motion on that. We do you need a motion to approve the? Make uh, a motion to uh, adopt the recommendation that we discussed uh, and uh, adjust the vacation periods for the two dark meetings, first in July and first in August. There a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, 
Um, that brings us to item 7C, 7, 8, or number 8, excuse me, I've got to get my rhythm here too. Adjournment. Thank you very much for coming to City Capitolos. Um, it, it Go ahead. We would uh, welcome, I think, perhaps, um, since we had slightly odd, the um, opportunity for our new members oh to I'm make sorry. some statements. Okay. Well. <laughs> no, you go first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be long, I promise. Take your time. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. I want to begin by thanking our current city council. It was because of your encouragement and endorsements that I felt right for this position. I look forward to working with all of you. Next, I would like to thank my campaign team, Lisa Christie, who's out there, Susan McPeak, Angela West, who couldn't make it tonight, and Celeste Gutierrez. I could not have done this without any of you, so thank you very much. I'd also like to thank my husband, Larry. Many people asked me along the campaign trail, how could I work full time, run a campaign, be a mom and a wife? And I would answer, I'm an amazing partner. I honestly could not do this without you. Thank you. I also need to acknowledge that little cutie next to him, our beautiful <laughs> and very smart daughter, Sedona. <laughs> she is what fuels me to advocate for children in our community. Investing early in youth means you're directly investing in your community. So thank you, Sedona, for being my light. I'd also like to thank my parents, Oscar and Carol Rivera, who are also up front tonight. They, the both of you have paved the way for me to be able to advocate for myself and for others around me. You taught me that giving back to your community is essential and should be part of everyone's life. I'm so proud to be your daughter. Thank you for always supporting me and being there for me. And finally, I promise, see if it's not too long. I would like to thank all of you, the voters. I was excited to see that so many people came out this election to vote. All of you, the community, are, is what makes, or excuse me, is, are the glue to what makes our community great. And I look forward to engaging you more in local decisions and hope that in, in my next four years, we continue the legal, legacy that council members Stephanie Harlan and Mayor Michael Termini have created. Because I am committed to ensuring that Capitol is sustainable, safe, and welcoming and family friendly for everybody. I look forward to working on the 41st Avenue, um, the development of 41st Avenue and the mall, as well as developing and utilizing the dedicated children's fund that we recently passed, as well as creating policy that supports all community members, including seniors and at-risk youth. It is an absolute privilege to work on, on your behalf, and I look forward to getting to work. Thank you. You know, it's an honor to be here. Um, I'm really grateful uh, to the voters of Capitola uh, for um, allowing me to come back and sit in this seat. Um, it's still new and exciting for me, but I, it's starting to feel uh, comfortable again. Um, uh, however, um, you know, one, uh, and as Yvette knows and Jacques knows, one doesn't get uh, to um, this position without the help and support of, of many people. Um, and I want to take a few minutes to, to thank them, uh, beginning with my family, um, uh, Helen and Ruby and Jesse. Um, Helen for being my treasurer and working with me to figure out the FPPC rules. Um, we spent late nights uh, completing uh, forms. Um, I want to thank Ruby for being my Instagram campaign manager um, and um, um, walking the neighborhoods with me. I want to thank my other daughter, Jessie, for being my Facebook campaign manager. Um, I was completely new to Facebook. I had no idea how to navigate it, what to do. Um, but she got me through that. And uh, 
Um, and I do want, you know, I had a birthday uh, just before the election, and uh, I made all my family for my birthday, you know, walk the jewel box neighborhood. Um, <laughs> so, but, you know, they were great sports, and I really so much appreciated the best birthday gift ever. Thank you, guys. I want to thank my campaign man manager, Lynn Banks, um, uh, for helping me uh, through this campaign, um, and her husband, Mike, for allowing her to do that and for the work that he put in on behalf of my campaign. I want to thank Amy Forrest for setting up my uh, website uh, and for Carl uh, for um, uh, allowing her to do that uh, and helping to walk their neighborhoods. Um, I want to make a special thanks to Bruce and Dory Arthur for their encouragement and inspiration to me. Um, I want to thank all those uh, neighbors who held house meetings for all the candidates. It was really a wonderful opportunity uh, to uh, meet the uh, neighbors in the uh, various uh, parts of Capitola. So I want to thank uh, Lisa and Dan and Linda and Larry and Lynn and Mike for opening up your homes and being such gracious hosts. Uh, I want to thank all those who made donations to my campaign. Uh, and finally, I want to thank all the residents of Capitola who voted for me, and I'll put out 2,809 thank yous, um, you know, at this time. Um, I want to thank um, the staff uh, for the orientation that they put on to help inform us. I want to thank Linda Friedy for all the guidance and help and patience and us uh, submitting all the necessary paperwork to qualify. Um, and not get into trouble. Um, and in, uh, I also want to just say um, some brief words about Stephanie and Mike. Um, and I know that um, we all know what wonderful and dedicated individuals they have been to Capitola. Um, and, and I'll just have to say, I, I mean, uh, uh, of all the years that I've lived in Capitola, I think that they've always been my inspiration of how we need to be engaged and involved and participate in our local government and in our, lo in our community, and that you can do it with, uh, with compassion and with humor. Um, so, you know, I think uh, for me, a nickname for Mike would be uh, Mr. Capitola. I always called him that. And for me, Stephanie is Ms. Capitola. So they will be missed here. Uh, but certainly not in our community. And finally, I just want to say I look forward to working with each and every one of you, uh, the council members, and to work together all for the benefit of Capitola. So thank you. I had not prepared any comments, but um, I can make a few. So, <coughs> I, I think um, I always wonder how people start out on their trajectory in life. It's one of the things I always think about. And um, sometimes when I become friends, they share that with me. And I'll share a little bit about myself, which I haven't done. But, um, one of my first campaign issues was on recycling, when no one knew how to recycle. Another one of my first campaign issues, I was in San Francisco, was to try to get uh, free concerts in the park. And I still remember assembling stages in Golden Gate Park so we could have free concerts and collecting money so that some people would help us continue. Um, I was very involved in the food movement, which has led to things like Whole Foods and things like that. We're the precursors of natural foods and trying to be concerned about what we eat. Um, I was also very much involved in um, police relations with the community. I was the president of Friends of Noe Valley for three years, and one of the things I stressed was that we need to have good relations with our police department because those are the people that should know our community and should know who needs protection and have that communication so we could always tell them what's going on. I worked on childhood leukemia, 
because I knew kids that were dying of childhood leukemia. I worked on that. I've worked on a lot of issues. I organized, helped organize the fir first Tate Ashbury Community Food Fair, uh, food, um, excuse me, um, street fair. I knew all the people in those neighborhoods. Um, I got elected to, uh, um, I won't go into that direction, but what I've never had really, because I've always been an advocate, I have four pages of stuff that I've worked on, but what got started, what got me started here in Capitola was Sam. You know, I was trying to get on the Finance Advisory Committee and everyone said, you know, you have to be part of the accepted whatever. You have to be part of the guys, part of the, you know, what's around town or I don't know how to put it. And I was beating my head against the bushes, <laughs> a wall, you know, how am I gonna get involved in Capitola? How, how am I gonna do something where I think I could, you know, make a difference? Um, so I went to Sam when I heard there was an opening on the Finance Advisory Committee. He said, yeah, I think I showed you my four pages. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I'd like to appoint you. And then a lot of committees after that, ran for city treasurer, no one ran against me. I think they all knew I was gonna win. <laughs> and I tried for three times to get elected city council, the fourth time I made it. I also tried to be uh, um, SoCal school treasurer, I mean, trustee, did not make that. So I ran for four elections before I even got to this position. And um, then this is my second election. And it's an honor, it really is. And I'll tell you why it's an honor. I've knocked on probably cycles to six or eight times on most of the houses of this town. And this last election, I think I lost a good 10 or more pounds. I, I was sweating, people would look at me. You know, I was over at Castle <laughs> Mobile Home Park and this lady, she, she couldn't speak English, but said, agua? <laughs> 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 she gave me a bottle of water. <laughs> oh, gee, Pam will remember the time that I drank too much water. She answered the door and I said, could I use your bathroom? So you do not drink water when you're campaigning. <laughs> so I've lots, lots of experiences like that where people, once they answer the door and they find out that you're running for city council, will tell you everything that they would like to see in Capitol. They'll ask you all sorts of questions. I've been talking to people, even though I gave myself three hours that night to campaign for an hour and a half on a Measure L. Jeez. How many times I spent talking about that? But all the other campaigns I've done, it's the same thing. It's a real honor to be able to come to a door and know that once the person sees that you're running for Capitola, they recognize that. There's something about Capitola. You can't do that in major cities. They're gonna slam the door in your face if they even answer it. So cherish the fact that everyone here in this council chambers right now and all those who are listening are living in a community where people are involved and they cherish the fact that people do put themselves out to get involved. Involvement is on all sorts of levels. People that share what they want, what they think about this community, what they aspire for this community, that's involvement. Neighbors that talk to their neighbors about how things could be better, that's involvement. Neighbors that are involved in their church, that's involvement. Laborers who are involved in their unions, that's involvement. Leaders who are involved in all sorts of other organizations. This community is an internetwork of people being involved with each other. You have a kid that's in the daycare. The person running that daycare knows a million neighbors. You talk to that person, that person will talk to other people. What I'm trying to say, be involved in ways where you could express your thoughts, express your feelings about the community you live in, 
and that moves around the city. That influences how other people feel about the city. They know that people are talking about the city because they care about it. I was elected because I talked to many people in Capitola, realized I care about this community, and I do. Thank you very much. May I adjourn now? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meeting adjourned.